The annual virtual rainbow brings together LGBTQ plus youth and their families, healthcare providers, community members, and other professionals to learn about and celebrate diversity and inclusion. Thank you for joining everyone and welcome. Everybody, welcome to Navigating the Allyship Through the Genderverse. Uh, we've got two fantastic presenters um, here with us this afternoon. And um, we've got Paxton McCausland, um, who is the program coordinator for the Montana, Montana Gender Alliance, as well as a general LGBT plus lobbyist for the Montana Human Rights Network. Uh, he also sits on the Transvisible Montana table. And through his work with the Montana Gender Alliance, Paxton facilitates several support groups and organizes ally trainings for local businesses and nonprofits. Uh, and he's joined um, by Miha, um, who is motiv mo excuse me, who is motivated. I'm sorry, I can't speak. Um, Miha, who is motivated by their mistakes and by indigenous brilliance. They fight for accountability and liberation, resisting notions that suggest colonial ideals, beliefs, and practices are superior. And you can read much more about Paxton and Miha on the website. And so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn it over to the two of you. All right, thanks so much, Deb. Um, so this, as Deb mentioned, is navigating the allyship through the genderverse. Um, we ask you to please silence your devices or notifications that might be distracting for you. Um, maybe put yourself on mute until you are called upon. Um, and we anticipate some time at the end for Q&A, uh, but we welcome questions in the chat. And yeah, um, Paxton, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi. Uh, my name is Paxton. Um, all of the things that Deb has said about me are in fact true. Um, I also have a couple of dogs and I'm trying really hard to make sure that you don't hear them, but they are kind of rude. So you might hear them um, and I'm sorry in advance. But yeah, I'm really excited to get into this topic with you guys today. I'm glad that you are, are all here. So let's go to the, are we ready for the next slide? Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I'm Miha, I go by the other pronouns and I am a double Aquarius with a Scorpio moon. Um, so before we begin, we like to start with the land acknowledgement and um, I'm very grateful and thankful to um, Ivan for Ivan's acknowledgement earlier. And we're gonna do this again because repetition is how we uh, learn and practice things and um, create good practices. So uh, we've got some information up there. Um, there's the website, the native land-ca.ca, or you can text that phone number that's there with the city, state, and zip code. And then if in the chat, you would please put um, whose uh, territory you are currently um, visiting, occupying, um, or is your homeland. Um, and the reason we do this is because a lot of folks are from different places especially when we do workshops virtually. And it's important to honor uh, the original and the current people occupying the land and space, uh, which in some cases are the same people. Um, indigenous people, we are still living here in our homelands. So when we do land acknowledgements, it's not only to be like, this used to be the land or the territory of, uh, because we are still here and we're still living in our homelands. Um, and uh, a lot of you are guests in our territories. Um, so when I'm in Missoula, um, it's the territory of the Blackfeet, the Salish, the Kootenai, and the Pondere. And where I'm at now, which is Seattle, it's the territory of the Coastal Salish and more specifically the Duwamish. Um, and kind of the reason we do this is because uh, the point is that we're guests and it's important to have gratitude and express cultural humility. Um, it's like when you go to a friend's house and you thank them for having you in their home or like if you're playing games there it's like house rules so you like go by what they say not like how you play it um and like sometimes you um bring a gift or you make a donation or you buy your friend a meal and the same goes for um when we visit other people's like territories and homelands like expressing gratitude and 
and uh, offering gifts. Um, another way to do land and people acknowledgement is to learn the names of the plants and animals in your area and like learn them in the indigenous people's language instead of like the settler colonial language um, English that a lot of us use. Um, so hopefully you've been able to put those in the chat. I don't see anybody put anything in the chat. There we go. Thank you, Nat. Um, and feel free to do this. Um, we're gonna also have introductions in a little bit where you'll be able to introduce yourself with your pronouns. And so if you are looking up uh, your, the territory you're occupying right now, you'll have another opportunity to express that with your pronouns. Awesome, thank you for that, Miha. I uh, forgot to mention that I am a, uh, a Cancer with a Sagittarius rising. Um, yeah, anyway, so um, hello and welcome. Uh, what is Transvisible? So we are a statewide organization uh, made up of all of these wonderful different organizations. So we have people that represent these organizations at the table. I represent the Montana Gender Alliance um, and the Free and Fair Coalition, essentially, um, yeah. And we really appreciate that. So as a coalition, um, we are representative of the transgender, non-binary, and T-spirit uh, community within Montana um, and their allies as well. We uplift, celebrate, and highlight the lives, leadership, and lived experiences of trans, non-binary, and T-spirit Montanans. In 2018, we developed, um, we were developed as a prevention from I-183, which did not make it to the floor which is awesome, um, which is just a legislative thing that happened in the past. And we learn uh, that creating visibility was more preventative and community building lasted longer uh, in order to stop anti-transgender legislation. We've also been led by a table of statewide orgs, which I said before, and community representatives. Community representatives and orgs are diverse in what they do and who they are. At Transvisible Montana, we prioritize and uplift positions of power for Black, Indigenous, and other people of color who are transgender, non-binary, and T-spirit. Yeah. Right, so going on along to our space agreement. Um, so these are just some agreements that we have come up in the past for other presentations that we've given, um, such as confidentiality, what happens in this presentation stays here. Um, another way to say that is keep the lesson and lose the name. So please don't share any personal information that you don't have consent to share. Um, along with that, we're not here to argue or debate. We're here to listen and learn. Um, We'd like to share the air. Another way to say that is uh, be aware of the space that you make and the space that you take. Speak for your own experience. Please don't speak for another person's experience that is not your lived experience. Um, it's impossible to understand someone's lived experience or explain it in the, your own words if you haven't lived it. Um, yeah, so do not out someone's story. That's another part of keeping what is said here in, in here <laughs> and uh, keeping lesson but losing the name. So if you make an or make a mistake, we do something called um, an oops. A sorry, my thing is blocking this. Oh my god, there's like a million buttons. Okay, there we go. So uh, yes, uh, if you make a mistake, just apologize, or we call it an oops, and then a thank you, or a thank you, um, and make a correction and continue on. Uh, so something about uh, learning and growing and changing is that you accept that you've done something wrong and accept that it's harmed somebody, but don't allow it to harm you, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, so uh, take that humility and learn from it instead of internalizing it. Um, yeah. So challenge yourself. Uh, we would like you to be brave in this space. Um, so there's brave spaces and there's safe spaces. Um, Miha, would you like to go over the difference between the two? Sure, yeah. A lot of times when like talking about um, things around like LGBT or even around race, people are like, this is a safe space to have this conversation. But the reality is that we can't actually guarantee safe spaces because safety looks a lot differently for everyone. And so our ask for you here is that um, you enter this brave space where you acknowledge that like there might be things or themes that are like tough for you to handle um, and that you make your own decisions on like what is going to be safe for you if you should stay in this space or if, and engage in this space or if you should leave this space. And then also like challenge by choice, you know, challenge yourself, challenge your growing edge, 
um, and, and be brave and to, and to learn stuff. Like when things get hard, you might not um, try not being like, oh, this doesn't feel safe anymore. I got to go. Like try being like, why doesn't this feel safe? Or what, what am I feeling about this? Beautiful. I love it. Thank you. Um, is there any addition that anybody would like to make to this list of space agreements? I'm trying to watch the chat, but I'm a little it's hard for me to see it. <laughs> okay, Miha, are we getting any additions? Uh, nope, I didn't see any. Okay. Um, well, then I would like everybody to either like put a thumbs up or raise your hand if you agree to these uh, space agreements. My thumbs up. Definitely seeing some thumbs. You see some thumbs. Awesome. awesome. Be respectful and kind. Be respectful and kind. Wonderful. We love that. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Uh, wonderful. So I suppose we'll move into pronouns now. Yeah, so what is a pronoun? It feels like one of those things where it's like, well, gosh, I should know what a pronoun is, but like, it sounds kind of like a wordy word. Um, so we're just gonna kind of like update on what a pronoun actually is. Um, so pronouns are used when we're talking about someone. It's really important to use a pronoun someone goes by whether they're present or not. Uh, for me, it's even more important that you use my correct pronouns when I'm not in the room uh, because it's showing that you're uh, honoring who I am, even when I'm not present. So like, if you only honor my pronouns when I'm around, that's performative. Um, that doesn't mean that you're actually honoring like who I've said I am as an individual. Um, you might've noticed during the introduction that Pax and I introduced ourselves by the pronouns that we go by. Um, and the reason we do this as a lot of other organizations um, and events and people do uh, is because there's a lot of assumptions people make about each other and a lot of things that we can't tell about each other just by looking. And pronouns are one of those things. Um, because the reality is that we all hold space inside of ourselves um, for invisible disabilities. Um, and these can be things that we view as positives or negatives. Um, and our pronouns are just one of those invisible identities. Um, and we're socialized to believe that certain things like long hair, equals girl or short hair or equals boy. Um, we know that these things are not absolute truths and have been breaking down these um, binaries for years. Um, if folks would put in the chat um, some examples, uh, maybe some other things that we've been taught about binary um, that we know aren't necessarily true. Pink versus blue, absolutely. That's actually was um, based in capitalism in the 20s. Prior to that, um, lots of babies were just all white um, and toys were not gendered, but you know, needed to develop marketing tactics to like sell more stuff for sure. So that was never even a, there's always been a pink and blue, a man, woman. It was, we need to make money. How do we divide this market and um, you know, sell things to other people? Homemaker versus business person. Absolutely. We're, you know, expanding the fields for all genders to exist in workplaces or in the home. Um, yes, boys have, well, I'm saying yes, I agree with your comment, um, but no, it's bad. Uh, that uh, boys have more physical strength than girls, right? We know that um, that's just not true, that every body is different and that someone's gender has nothing to do with um, their physical strength. Uh, fashion, dresses, yes, absolutely. Yeah, so there's a, a lot of things that we've already been breaking down over the years. And um, pronouns is just something that we are also having conversations about and finding ways to respect each other. Um, so pronouns are validating, right? Um, and if you mess up someone's pronoun, you make a correction and you move on. Uh, when you go on at length, um, apologizing or making emphasis on your use of someone's pronoun, um, you're making what is happening about you and not really extending respect. So if you're like, oh my gosh, you know, I've been doing so good. I, you know, I've been really, when you're, when you're not around is when I do it the most, you know, like all of that, none of that is actually helpful for the conversation or the other person. Um, and it is more about you and your internal process. So if you can like keep that internal 
uh, voice to yourself instead of like pushing it out on the person who you're like trying to like be respectful to. Yeah, good news. Um, so because like saying you're sorry might uh, seem like a nice gesture, uh, but it, uh, but then like when you say, oh, I'm sorry, people often feel inclined to be like, oh, it's okay, not a problem. And actually that's like not true or helpful. Like it was a problem, it didn't feel good, it's not okay. Uh, but we're like taught these like uh, colonial like niceties, right? Uh, it's like um, that like, that's what you do. If somebody says, I'm sorry, you say like, no, 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 it's fine, it's okay. Um, but it's not. Um, yeah, like I mentioned, going on and on about it can be embarrassing for you and mostly for the person that you've misgendered. And misgendered is a vocab uh, word, like maybe some of you haven't heard of, which is using the incorrect pronoun for someone. So like sometime in your life, you might've like been talking about somebody and you're like, he always does that. And you're like, oh my gosh, she always does that. Like you just made a mistake, right? Like, um, and you maybe you're even talking about another cisgender person, which is another vocab word, which means, um, you identify with um, you identify with the gender that matches the sex you were assigned at birth, um, and maybe you just you know sometimes we just mess up we just mess up people's pronouns even if we already know better. Like my mom used to call um, me my other siblings' names, you know, and we'd be like, "What?" Yeah. She's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe, okay, uh, which one are you? Um, so like we make mistakes, right? The point is to just like correct your mistake and move on. Um, so remember pronouns are things to replace nouns. Um, so they can be anything that that person identifies with. And it's not really up for you or me to decide what pronouns other people get to use or whether or not they make sense to us. Um, it's our job to just be respectful and support their autonomy and the right to make decisions about themselves and their bodies. Um, and again, I'm gonna use the word cisgender, um, which again is uh, that your gender matches the sex you were assigned at birth. You may have never felt or had the need to announce or correct uh, pronouns before because you live in a settler colonial culture that endorses a male or female binary and you already subscribe and feel like you fit into it. So um, it, might not, it might be a new thing for you to do this, but there are absolutely more than one way to like live a life. So try to be respectful folks. Yeah, Paxton. Awesome. Um, yeah, one of the ways that I like to explain uh, respecting other people's identities is that your perception of a reality is irrelevant to the existence of the reality. Um, if you think the sky is purple, that is irrelevant to the fact that the sky is blue. So if you think that somebody is using different pronouns, that's irrelevant to the fact that that person identifies by using other pronouns. Um, so just respect that that's another person's autonomy. Does, does that make sense, Miha? Yeah, and what's interesting about your comment about using the color of a sky is that no humans see the actual same colors. We might see likenesses, but we don't actually see the same colors. Um, so, yeah, even even that like spectrum is uh, gets blown up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is wild. Yeah, color is an illusion. Isn't that wild? It only exists in our brains. That's like to me when I figured that out, I was like, whoa, nothing's real. I can just. I can wear it. anyways. Okay, uh, moving on. Um, so to, much like sorry, what? I said much like gender, yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, but yeah, so as the Miha was talking, yeah, the gender verse. Um, as uh, Miha mentioned, um, pronouns are essentially like an invisible identity, meaning that when we look at somebody, we cannot automatically assume their um, pronouns, which is why it's always really important to ask somebody. If you're if you don't know what someone's pronouns are, do not assume them. Ask them, or just use they them because that's fairly neutral. Um, right. So I would like us all to practice um, an introduction in which we use our pronouns. Um, I believe that we should all start to normalize giving pronouns without being asked them. Um, I think that that will start a really wonderful societal 
experience of just not having to guess people's pronouns or not assuming that that is what you should be doing. Um, so I would like us all, since we're virtual, to do this within the chat. I would like you to say your name and then your pronouns. And you can also share why you were attending the workshop. So let me see if I can add mine. Da -da -da -da. There we go. And um, as you can see on Miha and myself, our Zoom titles, we have put our pronouns within that. And I highly recommend that. Wow, I'm sorry for all this. I can't, I don't know if you can see this like extra screen. Okay, there we go. Wow. Yeah. Um, could you see that? Sorry, I don't know how that popped up. Yep. Um, oh, cool. Um, but yeah, so feel free to start uh, normalizing, putting your pronouns in your Zoom name. You can put them on your your uh, business cards. You can put them in your email signature. Uh, just just give those give those suckers out willy nilly. That's what we're trying to normalize here. Yeah, and I would say for the rest of the Rainbow of the Rockies conference, um, I challenge you to um, each room that you go into, we have to be re-logging in. Just changing and adding your pronouns to your name every time and just like noticing what that feels like, um, making the effort, um, because like this is something like as trans, like trans non-binary and two-spirit people, we have to do this stuff. Um, so like for cisgender folks, like when you do this, it helps normalize the process so that like we are also aren't like outing ourselves um, every time we enter a space. So yeah. Throw in your intros. Let's see. We've got um, pronouns, some invisible identities that our folks have mentioned is starting a first two-spirit youth club and box elder. That's amazing. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, uh, bisexuality, yes, absolutely. Um, we know as LGBT folks um, about like invisible identities because that is one of uh, a lot of our invisible identities. Um, to to give a contrast to that, a non invisible great. identity yeah. would be um, the fact that I'm white because that's pretty obvious. <laughs> Yeah, not an invisible identity. However, though, I will say that there are like folks who are um, of like a racial or ethnic um, group that you can't tell because they are white in presentation. And so that would be an invisible identity in that situation. Yes, so I suppose skin color is not always. Great. Yeah, okay. Um, Awesome. Did everybody get the chance to put their uh, their intros within the chat? Yeah, there's a bunch in there. Thank you so much, folks, for sharing. Awesome. Um, right. So we are going to move on to, into things that make us unique. Um, so I am not sure where everybody is as far as education wise. Um, relating to gender and sexuality. So I'll just go over a little bit of things. Um, first of all, sex and gender are very different. Um, they're often used uh, synonymously, that's not the correct term, interchangeably. Um, but they're very different and they're often um, more noticeably different or more, uh, basically they're, they're different for trans folks. Um, so that's why it's so important to distinguish between sexuality or sex, sex and gender. Um, so the, the simplified way that we like to define sex and gender and the difference between them is that um, sex is between your legs and gender is between your ear, uh, your ears. Uh, so it's your mind, it's your identity, it's your, uh, your understood place within the world. Um, but your sex is often, um, identified or uh, stated or assigned to you at birth um, by whatever physician is in the room when you're born, if there is one. Um, I did not have one when I was born. Um, but yeah, so essentially uh, that's something that's assigned to us at birth. And we like to say assigned at birth because there are so many different types of sex characteristic markers or aspects of your physical form that would lead a physician to assign you a particular sex. Um, but in reality, there are a lot that can't be seen. For instance, um, 
chromosomes. Um, I highly doubt that many of the people um, in the audience here today actually know what your chromosomes are. Um, so you could appear one way and yet um, your sex could, in actuality could be something very different. Um, I also want us to understand and get away from the, the Western idea that there are two sexes. There are not two sexes. There have never been two sexes. Um, there is an infinite amount of ways to have a sex in in, a, in of itself. Um, and we could go into um, what it means to be intersex and what have you there. Um, but yeah, so they're very different things. Um, gender uh, is split up into a couple different uh, ways of expression or ways of having a gender. Um, so first of all, we have gender identity, um, which is looks like it says one's intermost connect of self as male female and a blend of both or neither um so your gender identity is again how you feel in society or how you feel within this world your gender expression expression and presentation um can be completely different from that um for instance there is this um cisgender heterosexual man that i found on instagram who um is married to a woman but also loves wearing like heels and skirts and that is just the way that he feels he wants to express his gender which is really beautiful and wonderful um so something that i really want to make as a point is that these are beautiful things that allow us to be the unique and wonderful people that we are we are all individual stars and in the society in this world um which is fun so your sex um, is different from your sexuality. Your sexuality is essentially um, who you want to smash bits with, is how I like to say. Um, so you will have your sexual attraction. You can also have romantic attraction um, or an emotional attraction, which is completely different from the desire of a sexual relationship. Um, so for instance, somebody could be romantically or emotionally attracted to uh, women, but not want to sleep with them at all. Um, I, I like to define like asexuality by saying like, sometimes I wake up in the morning and I'm just like, you know what I want? I want a big honking sex, but asexuals don't ever feel that way. And that is okay. But yeah. So your identity, um, is up for nobody else to decide besides yourself. That is, um, up for you to determine and for you to, uh, shape and form in whatever way suits you and you feel comfortable with. Um, nobody else can tell you what you are or who you are. Um, yeah, so those are just the beautiful things that make us wonderful and unique. And I hope that I didn't miss Yeah, that. it's, uh, so like one of my favorite quotes is that uh, gender is a universe and we are all stars, which means like we all have a place in this big giant multiverse um, some of us are just like more in proximity to each other than others. And it's important th to like, it just acknowledge that like people change. Like, are you the same person you were 10 years ago, 20 years ago? I mean, like we change our hairstyles, we change our hair colors, the sorts of clothes we wear to represent ourselves, our favorite foods, things we do, who we're attracted to. And like, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with changing. And a lot of times you hear um, like anti-trans, like, rhetoric about like well they're gonna make this forever change that they can't ever go back on and it's gonna ruin their lives and like not only is that just like statistically like inaccurate um it's okay for people to change and i'm sure that there's something that we've all done that we all wish we had and maybe regretted and it's people's own decisions to make those for themselves um yeah you know like have you ever had a bad tattoo? You know, it's okay. Like you still got it. You made that choice and you moved on. Like, and, and the thing with gender um, is that it's so, has so much more power over person um, that by limiting people based on like, they might regret it is really taking away their opportunity to actually flourish and become a better person. So. Yes, yes. Um, another thing that I want to go over just really quickly is that, so gender terms are, I mean, there's many, but, um, the typical ones are male and female or are man and woman and sex terms are male and female. Um, one of my biggest pet peeves is when I am filling out some sort of form and it says like, what is your sex? And it only includes man and woman. Those are not sexes. Those are genders. 
Um, so please, please make sure that you do not confuse those two. If you were creating some sort of form, um, it becomes very complicated for people like me that are trans and where our gender and our sex do not align. Um, but yeah, so that's an important thing. Um, I had another bit about pronouns and I completely forget it. So I probably remember it in like five seconds, but yeah. I love that. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I sort of think on that note, Sorry, am I lagging? You're good now. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, uh, <laughs> something that I think about in terms of like filling out forms and stuff is, um, you know, like as um, trans, non-binary and two-spirit people, uh, we are often lumped up into this LGBT alphabet soup. But as we mentioned before, there is a difference between sex and sexuality and gender. Um, those th things are all three different things and they're often lumped into one, which is why it's very, uh, we are specifically a trans non-binary and two-spirit organization because often we get lumped in with LGB folks when our experiences might be like intersected by that, but that is like separate from that. So, yeah. I remember the thing that I want to say about pronouns, um, and that is uh, just going off of if you are creating some sort of intake form, you do not have to list all of the pronouns. Pronouns, just like gender and sexual and sex, are infinite, um, and therefore it's it's kind of um, futile to try to list all of the pronouns or all of the genders because it's impossible. So what I recommend is just having a fill in the blank so that people can insert their own pronouns without having options uh, to like force them into some sort of box. Um, yeah, so that's just a recommendation that I have. Cool, awesome sauce. Great. So um, this is sort of like a trans umbrella. Um, we talked about how um, trans non-binary and two-spirit folks often get put under this like LGBT umbrella, but actually we have our own T umbrella. Um, and this is sort of like showing you that like being cis or cisgender and um, uh, the gender binary, these things are like outside of this trans umbrella. Um, and so uh, we've talked about history and science reminding us that there are more than two genders um, and there's more than two sexes. Uh, we, we know that two spirit and other gender variant people have existed, have always existed on this continent and abroad. Uh, we know that XX and XY are not the only biological combinations or factors in determining gender or sex. And we know that although social constructs can be tempting to believe as biological, they are in reality built and maintained by systems of power and control. Um, so prioritizing a, gen a two gender binary system insists that, are, that there are only two genders and it is harmful. It often promotes gender hierarchy in which women or non-binary individuals are viewed as subordinate to men. So when we talk about like uh, pay gaps and things like that um, and like inequities between like men and women, this is all part of the bi gender binary that has set this up. So like something that a lot of people subscribe to and wanna believe in um, is actually can be really harmful, um, not only to uh, non-binary and two-spirit folks and people who don't wanna exist within that binary, but also to people who are existing within the binary themselves. Um, the gender binary system reinforces stereotypes, stereotypes that harm everyone, uh, everyone in society, and it limits who we allow people to be. Um, like maybe you are, uh, cis man who identifies um, as a cis man, but maybe you really love painting your fingernails and like all your like bros tell you that like, that's too feminine and blah, 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 that's for girls. Well, that's just not true. Like that can be for cis men too. And I think that like, there's a meme like that's been going around that's all like, if you are a man and who like makes fun of like, um, when other men do effeminate things, it's because you're afraid of like what would happen um, if you were to experience life like as a woman. So like um, you're actually like perpetuating the like shitty things you put on women. Um, so uh, when we understand gender in terms of a spectrum or a genderverse, which is what I prefer to call it, genderverse, multiverse, um, 
we can change, we can challenge these harmful stereotypes um, and they better reflect the full nature of our human experience. Um, again, like gender is universe, we're all stars, there's room for all of us and each of our little like genderverse ways. Um, so we're gonna quickly define some of these terms you might already know, or maybe you're curious about, um, but please note uh, these terms come about because people find a place of comfort within them, but not everyone um, has found or wants them for themselves. Um, so it's important to not give people labels that they don't give themselves. Uh, you can find out by asking someone, um, if you can ask them a personal question, um, if they say no, don't pester them. Uh, Oftentimes, if you just have conversation with people, that stuff's gonna come out. So you don't need to like pretend like you're, or think that you're like engaging somebody by asking them that question because it can be really rude. Um, just like let it happen. So um, our first term, I'm gonna put some of these in the chat so that you can look at them. Uh, so transgender or trans is an umbrella term for a person whose gender identity, gender expression, or behavior does not conform to the sex which they were assigned at birth. Um, the gender binary is the dominant idea that there are only two genders, that the way we identify or are told to behave um, are linked only to two sexes, the physical characteristics of our bodies, male and female. Um, and we know that to not be true. Let's see, what are these other ones? Put them in the chat. Um, so cisgender or cis, we talked about this one, which is a term for people whose gender identity matches the sex they were assigned at birth. It is the opposite of the term transgender. Related terms include cis sexism and cis normativity. Um, and I'm wondering if folks notice the singular use of the word they. Um, because like we have already been using neutral pronouns in language for, I don't know, like I think even like centuries, um, it's already existed. It's only really brought up as like, um, this thing people don't want to do or that they're resisting when it's about, um, non-binary or transgender people. So like we, we already use singular they, um, so don't let anybody, don't let your English teacher tell you that it's, uh only for multiples, we already use it. A uh, great example is like you find a wallet on the ground, you're like, oh my gosh, uh, I wonder whose wallet this is. I hope they can get it back soon. You know, I hope they find it or, you know, how should I get a hold of them? Uh, you're already using um, they, their, and them as a singular. Um, you just might not have noticed it. Um, so non-binary, agender, or gender queer. Um, is someone who does not identify within a gender binary and some people use gender non-conforming. Um, Two-spirit, two-spirit is a contemporary term used to describe indigenous people who assume cross or multiple gender roles, attributes, dress and attitudes for personal, spiritual, cultural, ceremonial or social reasons. These roles are defined by each cultural group and can be fluid over a person's lifetime. Some people use a word indigiqueer or the names um, for themselves in their own traditional languages. Um, something to note about being two-spirit is not to, all two-spirit people are um, transgender or non-binary. Um, two-spirit's another umbrella word that encompasses LGBT folks. And this, like what's problematic about it is that um, us like having to say that as like two-spirit people, like saying like it's, um, that we're that it's a, a contemporary LGBT term is that we're basically having to assimilate to uh, settler colonial culture and like like saying oh we belong in this place when actually like we didn't have to like fight or come out to be who we were or are in our communities because uh, we already were just like accepted um, and. You know, we Transvisible Montana offers a Two Spirit 101 workshop and a gender and colonization workshop. So if you are interested in learning more about into that, um, I welcome you to contact us. Um, we will post our email here shortly. Um, and then gender fluid is someone whose gender expression changes. Uh, I wanted to throw in uh, 
a question here. It's up at the top, which is uh, I wanted to ask folks if they know why intersex um, like drag or cross dressing might not be under the trans umbrella. Anybody got thoughts about why those might not fit under the trans umbrella? Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you it's because, um, yes, okay, somebody said the person could identify as cis and straight, yes. So um, you could be um, intersex and identify as a gender fluid person. You could identify as a gender, uh, but you might not. You might, yeah, you might identify as cis. Um, you could be a drag queen and also be two-spirit or you're not, or you could be non-binary when you're not in drag or you're not, or maybe you do um, like non-binary drag. Um, cross-dressing is there because um, cross-dressing is more of like a, for funsy behavior and less of a like uh, about your sex or your sexuality, um, but it can be, but it's not. So these things we listed, um, but they aren't necessarily the umbrella. Like some of these people under this umbrella might have those other traits or identities, but not all of them do, if that makes sense. Yeah. And then um, our last one there was uh, intersex and intersex is a general term used for a variety of conditions in which a person is born with a reproductive or sexual anatomy that doesn't seem to fit the typical definitions of female or male. Uh, intersex is socially constructed category, just like our gender binary, and it reflects a real biologic variation. Um, the statistics on intersex folks, people born intersex, is that about the same amount of people who are born naturally redheaded. Um, and what's really awful about this, um, when we talked about that gender-bred gender person and about uh, gender being between your ears and sex being between your legs, a lot of times what happens um, when a child is born, if their genitalia does not match or align um, with this like, uh, this like gender binary, they will do surgeries, um, a lot of times unnecessary surgeries to correct the body, correct, and like they're thinking that it's correct. Um, and like then these people, oops, excuse me, these people are living um, not their own lives, but the lives that like they were told that they needed to be living. There's a lot of really great uh, information out there. We're also going to provide for you all a resource list that has a link to some more information on intersex folks as well. Um, yeah, so much information to cover. Yeah. You wanna hit up that next slide, Paxton? Yeah, I'm down. Um, yeah, uh, I believe somebody in the comments asked if um, those surgeries still exist. They do. There's a, there's a couple of organizations that are fighting this because it needs to stop. It can be a really big, uh, often these children aren't told that this has happened to them and they might learn when they're older. And that could be really, really horrifying to find out that that happened to you without your consent. Um, yeah. Yeah. Na, na, na. There we go. Um, so these are some pretty classic do's and don'ts of how to be a good ally. Uh, the first one we have here is just assuming or believing that someone, uh, when they tell you about their own identity and experience. So please do that. Like honor the fact that somebody would like to tell you something about themselves that they want you to know. Um, yeah. So another, the opposite of that is to make an assumption about an, an identity or intentionally misgendering somebody. Um, when when you intentionally misgender somebody, you are asserting your own autonomy over there. So you're taking their power and supplanting yours in, into it. So you are taking someone's power away from them. Um, someone's identity is a power. So don't do that. <laughs> um, so a real name, um, uh, sometimes uh, trans people will change their names. Uh, sometimes they don't. Um, but uh, the name that you were given at birth um, is also known as your dead name. I call it a birth name, something along that line. Um, so my real name is Paxton, even if it's not my legal name. Um, so if somebody tells you that that is their name, take that at face value, take that for them acknowledging that they would like you to know who they are. 
Um, yeah, so that is their real name. Um, the other name is dead. It is harmful to hear it is to cause harm to that person. Um, so, oh yes, um, feel free to ask people about their pronouns. That's always acceptable. Um, do not assume pronouns and start introducing yourself with your pronouns. So another do is to add your pronouns to your name tags, your email tags, your business cards. Uh, for educators, um, have students write their pronouns in addition to their name. Uh, let's start normalizing this and making this a practice that um, is not uncomfortable at all because everybody does it. Um, so please don't assume or ask any personal questions about genitalia, hormones, or surgery. Um, I have like a couple of guidelines uh, or just rules of thumb as far as questions go. The first one is if you would not want somebody to ask you that question, do not ask someone else that question. Um, if you wouldn't ask your grandmother that question, do not ask someone that question. So if you wouldn't say, grandma, how do you have sex? Then don't ask somebody else that question. Um, in essence, um, Try to be respectful of somebody's autonomy and, um, you know, personal information and uh, understand that that is something that they might not want to reveal to you. Um, another thing to understand is that uh, when you are talking to somebody or debating something um, with another person that they that personally affects them, for instance, um, an anti-trans bathroom bill. Um, if you are not trans, that that bathroom bill will not personally affect you, but it will affect a trans person. So if you're debating that with them, that will um, that debate and that conversation will cause the trans person more emotional energy to expend and to have that conversation with you than you will have um, if you are not trans. So please be like cognizant of the energy that and capacity that you are asking somebody to expel uh, with that. Um, another really just good rule of thumb is that Google and YouTube are your best friends. Um, I was raised in a super conservative household. Um, I was not taught good things about trans folks or anybody in the LGBT community uh, by my family. And I had to do a lot of my own education. And here I am today educating you guys. Um, so I just want you to know that all of that information I taught myself and um, you can too, if you need to. Um, but also think about the emotional energy that it would take you to Google something Whereas the emotional energy that it would take somebody that is trans to explain that to you. Um, so just like consider that before you ask a question. Right. Also, somebody's personal medical information is is not your information to have. If if somebody has not shared a piece of information with you, it probably means that they don't want you to have that information. Um, and people's personal medical information is extremely important to them, especially when you're trans and your body is political, politicized. Um, yeah, so just keep in, keep in uh, perspective the fact that you might not need to know what you're curious about, or you just might not need to have that question answered, even if you're just curious, um, or you can just Google it. Um, right, so... So if somebody is giving or speaking hateful language or misinformation, feel free to interrupt it. Um, there is a big discussion about, uh, you know, who should do this gender justice work? Um, should we put that on trans folks? Should we um, make trans folks work further uh, to be treated correctly? Or should cis folks step in and help? And I think, yeah. If you have the energy to do that, um, feel free to do it. It's It would be really helpful <laughs> to someone that's not cis. Um, so do not use like, any have, of these words. Oh, go ahead. Like, don't just like go do the work. Like you need to consult with like trans yes. people about that uh, because they might in fact rather do the work themselves. But if you have resources to help them along, that's great. But like, don't just do the work and assume um, doing this like great service. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, whenever you're uh, helping somebody in a community uh, that you are not a part of, or you're having, you're uh, giving aid or what have you, you're giving your energy and your time um, to help a community that you are not a part of, make sure that you always talk to that community before you do anything, or else what you are doing may be extremely ineffective. Um, another thing to ask is not just like what they need, but how they would like it to be given to them or how they would like it to happen. Um, there we see this all the time with um you know international aid organizations like unicef or 
A really good example of this is Tom Shoes. So uh, the company Tom Shoes, I'm sure everybody has heard of it, but essentially if you buy a pair of shoes, the company will donate a pair of shoes um, to uh, people that don't have shoes. And that sounds like a really great business model, but in actuality, the countries that these shoes are being given to, those people in those countries, they can make their own shoes. And by giving them those shoes, you're we're stopping them from uh, well, were incapacitating their ability to create their own shoes and to create their own industry. Um, yeah, so don't buy Tom shoes. They're actually not a great organization. Um, and also Google and research anything that you give money to because you have no idea how they're using it. So make sure you do before you give them money. Um, yeah, also like, like <clears throat> rainbow capitalism right there to that, like speaking of yes. like how that works out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if Svedka is gonna, you know, sell me a bottle of vodka that has a rainbow flag on it, but isn't going to donate any of that money to my community, I don't want to drink that vodka. It's not going to taste very good. But yeah. Um, so there are a lot of words um, that have been used uh, in a negative way to for the trans to harm the trans community. Um, I don't want to read them because they're gross words and I don't like them. Uh, but you can see them on, I believe it's the fourth box down on the don't side. Um, please don't use any of those words. Um, I don't even like to use them as a trans person because they are harmful and because they are misleading and just misinformation. So please don't use those. Um, oh man, I just saw the last one. Okay. Um, yeah, so feel free to educate yourselves um, on the trans community, on uh, perspectives that you don't have. Um, it's very important. Um, one thing that is a discussion that um, we've talked a lot, well, I've seen a lot of discourse on recently and in the past is that um, visibility does not equal liberation. So pair that uh, that education with action, if you can, with community um, input. Oh, right. So uh, one movie I run a parent, I run a, a support group for the parents of trans non-binary, T-spirit and gender non-conforming kids. And one of the things I recommended for them that they loved was watching an incredible documentary that's on Netflix. It's called Disclosure. And it is about uh, trans representation within the media for the past however many, like since we were in media. Um, it's a really important piece uh, to discuss. And it really goes over the importance of watching um, or taking in media in which trans people are being depicted by trans people. Um, for instance, when Jared Leto, oh, we don't have to talk about Jared Leto. We could say uh, Eddie Redmayne. When Eddie Redmayne was in uh, The Danish Girl and he played a trans woman, he won an Oscar or an Emmy or something like that. And when he went up to get that Oscar or Emmy or what have you, that award, everybody saw a man taking a, an award for a female or like a, a woman character. And that is really harmful because that shows people in the audience that trans women are men. So we need that, which is untrue and is extremely harmful for the trans community, especially trans women. Um, so make sure that you're watching uh, media in which trans people are being depicted by trans people and which trans actors are being hired for those positions uh, to depict their community. Um, yeah, and just be cognizant of the ways in which these characters are being depicted. Um, a really important piece is that that character's identity is not surrounded by the fact that they are trans. We see this a lot of the times with other um, members of the LGBT community, for instance, like the lesbi like lesbians. Um, uh, I feel like a lot of lesbian representation is literally just abject like suffering. Um, and that is often what we have seen for trans folks too. So just be cognizant of the way in which we are being portrayed uh, and acknowledge that that might not be an accurate portrayal because we're probably not in control of how we were being portrayed. Yeah, so go watch Disclosure, it's incredible. All right, um, okay, so uh, the likelihood that you have been in a bathroom and used that bathroom while a trans person was in there is extremely likely. You probably have been in millions of bathrooms with millions of trans folks and just not have known it. And that's okay, <laughs> we're all people and we all gotta drop a deuce. So let's all just be comfortable with that. So you don't really need to worry about who's in your bathroom because we're all in the bathroom for the same thing and none of it is to harm another person. Uh, so please acknowledge that. Also, if literally anybody could find me an article in which a trans person harmed a cis person in a bathroom, I will give you everything in my savings account. 
1000 percent i'll hold me to that um because that does not happen that is a rhetoric that has been continuously perpetuated and it is not accurate what happens is that trans folks are attacked so keep that in mind okay um yeah so i think it's important that we distinguish why we need to talk about politics as far as trans people go and that is because um, it is a privilege to not have to worry about legislation. It is a privilege that your human rights are not in debate by a couple of, like a handful of people that you do not have control over, that do not care about your perspective and that do not listen to you. Um, so while yes, politics are sometimes very icky and not very fun to talk about, it's a privilege not to have to talk about them. It's a privilege not to have to worry about them. So consider that and please vote for progressive movements that help trans people and that go towards trans liberation. Um, so gender reveal parties, as we, as we have seen in California, can literally be deadful uh, or deadly. Um, I don't know why I said deadful. Um, this isn't deadwood. But anyways, uh, gender reveal parties, they're old. We don't need them. They're unnecessary. Your baby is a baby. And that is where that lies. I, I don't understand why people get so excited about knowing what genitalia your baby has because that and honestly will not determine what sort of person they are and we already have baby wait what baby. baby shower yeah yeah just have a baby shower like gender reveals gross we don't need them they light fires they're silly um yeah so please don't host a gender reveal party it it does a lot of harm in a way that is unseen for people that are throwing them generally uh so yes um let me see if and you could be yourself up or your child up for disappointment further down the road you know yeah yeah i think the the like person that originally threw a gender reveal party um realized that their child is trans and then they were immediately like oh that was a really bad idea that i did that <laughs> um yeah so i think that do you want to pop over to the support slide we've only got a few minutes left yeah sorry guys okay is this it yeah Da, 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 da. Okay, so why is all of this information important? So it's important because this might be a perspective that you have not considered. And when you listen to the perspectives and lived experiences of people that um, you can't relate to or you don't have that lived experience, you're just going to open up your mind and be able to understand things at a different level. And that's never a bad thing. It's never bad to talk to people that have perspectives that are different from you. Um, another thing is, is that Trans folks might be your loved ones and you might not know it. <laughs> like you might have a sibling that's trans or a kid that's trans um, or a best friend that's trans. The likelihood that you will meet a trans person and like them is pretty highly, pretty high. Um, yeah, so feel free to do that. And I think that there's like a really horrifying statistic. I believe 40% of trans folks will commit suicide or attempt suicide within their lifetime. I, I don't know the exact number, but I think it's about like 63% of fo trans folks that are not accepted by their families will commit suicide. Um, Non-acceptance and the inability to access gender affirming care are two of the largest reasons uh, or most notable reasons why trans people commit suicide or attempt suicide. Um, yeah, and these people are members of your community. And when your like when members of your community suffer, your community suffers. So keep that in mind. Support trans folks because we're pretty awesome and we're pretty beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Um, so these are some organizations that we are affiliated with. Um, yeah. I'm I'm trying to think of like other closing remarks. Well, you can move to the last slide. Awesome. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. Sorry that I rambled a little bit. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. And um, I hope to see you around at the rest of the Rainbow Over the Rockies conference. And please just remember that uh, transgender, non-binary, and two-spirit people are not different than you. We are different like you. Everybody is unique and their own individual, um, no matter how much we try to conform to all of these things that um, colonialism and capitalism and all of these forces try and tell us, like we all are awesome and amazing and have a place and value. Um, and yeah, that is how we are like each other. Yeah, we should all have more solidarity for being victims of colonization.
because I feel like that and or the patriarchy and cap anyways. Um, but yeah, so I do run support groups. Um, if you are the parent of a trans non binary two spirit or gender non conforming child, uh, feel free to email me at that email below that packs in on mhran.org. Um, or if you would like to, I also um, organize a support group just for trans folks, uh, trans non binary two spirit and gender non conforming folks. Um, so yeah, feel free to email me if you would like anything. I can also help you change your name or yell at anybody that you want yelled at or uh, organize a, a, a training for your boss or what have you. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. But thank you all for coming. <laughs> Paxton, Miha, would you mind uh, putting this presentation up on the, the document share hub? If you haven't already, I think that a lot of people who weren't able to be here would really love to have this as a resource. Awesome. Yeah, we can we can totally do that. Yeah, we right. can definitely. Terrific. Thank you. Um, and so, yeah, so everybody's got a two hour break. So um, go relax, get some food, and we'll see everybody back here at uh, four o'clock Mountain Time. Awesome. Bye. Oh, I didn't realize there was a two hour break. Keep going, Paxton. <laughs> you get a break. Paxton, Miha, thank you so much. This was a fantastic presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Deb. Take care. Yep. Bye, guys.